Welcome to the Millennial Network Podcast. Now your host, Coach Danny Renee. So what's up, y'all? It's Coach Danny Renee here, and this is the Millennial Network Podcast live recording. And the topic today is, have I saved enough? Have you saved enough? A lot of us know that we have not saved enough. I mean, we can easily look at our bank account. If we don't have 401k investment in accounts, we know we have not saved um, enough. So this presentation is for you. This presentation is always also for those people who do have money in their 401k. Um, and they, they're putting money into it, but not really sure what a pension look like or exactly what a 401k is supposed to do. And this is also for that savvy, savvy investor who is investing each month, each year, has you know a nice chunk of change, but don't really know how much money they need to, in order to retire. They just know that they're doing all the right things. This is for you. So this example in Instagram, if you're not on my um, group, definitely go to the Millennial Network Financial School on Facebook. Uh, this will be live, but also, um, you know, I have like specific questions and different things um, in that group and, you know, presentations and whatnot that I plan on doing. But anyways, um, so Instagram, if you, you just kind of got to hear it, you can't necessarily see it. So this is pretty much have I saved enough? So ultimately, when it comes to retiring, one of the most important questions you have to ask yourself is, have you saved enough money? We all hear retirement. We all hear like an age when we look at the baby boomers, we look at our grandparents, like everybody eventually want to retire at a certain point. But like I said last week, um, retirement is not just an age, it's an amount of money that you need saved up. So you can see here the chart, this chart right here nearly shows like three quarters, so, you know, three types of people, like 40, 40 years old, 40 years and older. So millennials, we are starting to, you know, approach our mid thirties. Some of us like the older millennials, they are 40. So this is showing like an example of people that is 40 and older and they have less than $100,000 saved for retirement. 39% of these people have zero. They have nothing, nothing to save, but 35% of people have less than $100,000. Now, I remember I used to ask people these, uh, ask clients like this question when I first sit down with them because some people are like, man, $100,000 is a lot of money, especially if you don't have $100,000. But you have to take in consideration like what is that money needed for, right? And I'll go over that here in a little bit. Um, but that's uh, that's a really large number for a large group of people that don't have anything saved or have less than $100,000 saved. So hopefully you're in the minority group of people who is a little bit better prepared. And obviously if you're a millennial, you are in that happy spot to where you really miss out on a lot of years of not investing, but you're also in that spot to where if you become smart um, and start doing the right things, pay off debt, you know, and start, you know, getting your emergency um, savings together and then starting investing, you are in that right age to where you could really make a difference in a turnaround in your whole financial situation. I don't care how much money you're making, it is possible, right? Some of you all are actually doing a lot better than some of these professional athletes. I mean, it, I mean, these singers, you know, these uh, celebrities that we follow, like COVID exposed a lot of them to where no matter how much money they were making, they were living, they were still living paycheck to paycheck. So you could really change the difference in your life if you just follow simple strategies and rules. OK, but sometimes just looking at a retirement, uh, you know, account and balance doesn't really tell the whole story. So I'll show you guys like a simplified version, you know, of like just some kind of like things to consider. So we had two hypothetical people here, Mary and John. I didn't choose these people, so it is what it is, right? But we got Mary, we got Mary and John. Both are age 62 and they're wondering if they can retire. So let's see who's better prepared, right? So Mary is a nurse. She has five hundred thousand dollars. Don is an advertising executive with one point five million dollars in retirement savings. So obviously, at first glance, it looks like Don Don is obviously in a better position because we're like, yo, like Don got so much more money. Um, but there's critical information that is being missed when we see stuff like that, which is why I told you guys, like with the celebrities, you know, professional athletes, like there's so much information to take in consideration, right? So what are their retirement expenses expected to be? So Mary has a much more modest lifestyle. Um, she expects to need about $50,000 per year 
to live comfortably on. Like we hear the term a lot. A lot of people say, I want to live comfortable, right? Well, Mary, she's she's in a good position to pretty much live comfortable, right? Don, however, has a mortgage on his home and a vacation property. So his expenses are a lot higher. Is it at $150,000, right? So if you divide your retirement savings by expected retirement expenses, um, it can provide a quick estimate of whether you're ready to retire or not. So what I'm going to say is divide your retirement savings, savings by your expected retirement expenses. So savings by expenses, and it'll show you if you're ready to retire or not. I don't care how old you are, you can start doing this now so you can have a bigger picture of where you want to be in the future, okay? It doesn't factor inflation, so that's what we got to consider. Obviously, this past year, inflation has been over 8%, so you do have to consider that. So it doesn't factor in um, inflation or potential investment return. So we don't know what these, like, like a lot of times, like if I'm using the term savings, remind you, I'm using that term loosely because in reality, you need to be investing your money, not having your money in just a regular bank savings account, okay? So it doesn't factor inflation or potential savings or returns. So you can see that despite the different retirement profiles, both Mary and Don have total savings that are, that are expected to last each of them about 10 years. So 62 to 72, that's going to last them about 10 years. And then what's going to happen after that? Like, that's why we sometimes see people end up back to work or living with their kids or different things like that, because they didn't factor in what they're supposed to be doing, which is why if you're in a position to be able to um, start investing in all that, do it now. Who wants their kids? I personally don't want my kids to be taking care of me. Like, I want to be able to set that up for myself, right? Um. So I'm sorry, go back. Yeah. Anyways, um, so Mary is eligible to collect Social Security benefits. We may not, millennials, just to be completely honest, the way that research and everything is showing is that it's possible for us not to even have access to that, okay? So Social Security benefits right now, and this example was about 15000 In addition, she's working, she, I'm sorry, in addition, she's eligible for like a pension from her prior job as a nursing assistant at a, at a local hospital, with this additional income totaling $35,000 annually, Mary only needs to generate $15,000 in retirement income. That's a year, right? A year worth of savings. So Don is eligible for Social Security as well, um, which is going to amount to about $25,000 because he's made more money. He owns a couple of rental properties and provide extra income about um, his his rental property is going to pay him about $50,000 a year. So Don Social Security and rental income cover half of his annual retirement expenses. Thus, his average savings only, so his savings only need to generate $75,000. As you can see down here where it says net retirement expenses, his is about $75,000 each year of what he needs, okay? So just applying this information, um, this is, you know, the calculation that I mentioned. Mary appears to be well prepared for retirement. Her savings need to generate very modest annual retirement income and appear to be enough to last her more than 30 years. So she is pretty much set up for like the next 30, 30 years. Don's situation has improved, but he is still somewhat constrained. He could wait to re retire until his expenses are a little bit lower. So as he started to pay off some of that debt, he could retire a lot sooner. But that's things that you have to consider is once you hit retirement. As we hear a lot of times is you want to buy it, you want to generate as many assets as possible. And that's a whole different story. I could bring a credit person, a real estate person on here one of the, one of these days. But um, you will definitely want to take in consideration that um, the more expenses you have, and that's like credit or just any any type of expense is going to really make it harder for you to retire or it's going to really delay that time so just remember this is obviously a basic calculation because again we're not factoring in inflation and investment return so with a good investment you know a good retirement plan both could actually do very well and that's i'm talking to you guys as well is if you had a plan a very detailed plan and if, if it was something you were working every year every quarter every month every week you could do very well. That's why I keep asking people if they want to do 
um, a budgeting workshop, maybe on a Sunday, so I can show you guys how to look at mint. Because if you see yourself winning a lottery one day or owning a business one day, you need to be able to manage the first income stream that you have. And a lot of times that's from your job. You need to be looking at your job income as if you're generating revenue for a business. What expenses do you have? You know, what money do you have coming in? How can you grow that money so that you could put into different areas of life, invest in different areas of life, whether it's yourself, you know, kids, family, businesses, time, hobbies, like the, all, of, all of those different things are very important. OK, so I often hear people say like, oh, you can't retire unless you have a million or two, two million dollars say it's don't get me wrong. Like I want several plus million dollars say right. Um, but I hear that because and people typically say that because they don't have a plan. It's just we hear a million dollars. We know that's a lot of money. But to be honest, sometimes a million dollars is not even enough money. Um, some people can't necessarily retire too much off of a million dollars, depending on the type of expenses they have, if their house is paid, paid off, when they when they are expected to, to retire, different things like that. So most people, millennials, I'm speaking to you, obviously, most millennials, you're going to need minimum a million dollars if you're looking to live off of like an average income. So just take keep that in mind when it comes to planning and creating a strategy for yourself. So obviously having more savings is better than nothing, right? But as George Foreman um, obviously observed, is how much retirement income you need that is important. So if determining how long you're going to live, how much you're going to spend, and whether you save enough, weren't challenged enough, well, these are pretty much um, behavioral barriers of a retirement income strategy. These are traits and just things you need to consider when it comes to creating your own. So obviously here's the years that I, I just mentioned. Okay, so one behavioral barrier is called the saver's paradox. Research has shown that for those who successfully worked and saved all their lives, entering retirement and suddenly um, converting from a saver to a spinner can be psychologically um, challenging. I'm sorry. A recent study found that more than three quarters. Sorry, yeah, I was just looking at the bottom. Um, but a research found that more than three quarters of retirees with an IRA did not take any withdrawals after 10 year retirement. Unfortunately, these individuals may unsuccessfully restrict their spending and may not enjoy their retirement as much as they um, potentially could. Why does it seem like my clicker is tripping? There we go. Ah, Lee. If, if the saver's paradise is not spending enough, the hyperbolic discounting could be characterized as spending too much. Hyperbolic discounting, um, excuse me, hyperbolic discounting is placing too much value on rewards today while discounting the benefits in the future. To illustrate, think of a fancy restaurant where the waiter comes in, like with all these nice desserts and whatnot, and you're, you're deciding to watch your weight, but you just can't resist, right? So you decide to go in. Um, this is pretty much hyperbolic discounting. You value the reward of the dessert today. You know, you're going to smash that dessert today, even though you know it's not good long term. And that's how a lot of people are with their finances, too. It's like you really want that clothing outfit. You really want to take advantage of that sale, but not realizing that it could really hurt you longer term by not investing it right now, right? So it's not making sense for your future health. So in retirement, this can not happen when you suddenly have a large amount of money available, right? You imagine, like I said, an example, if you are that millennial with over a million dollars, say, like you could be this person to where you end up spending more because you're looking at yourself like, hey, I'm rich, but at the same time, not being smart with the expenses. And that's another important reason why even taking into consideration like these baby boomers, these baby boomers are retiring. That's why I was telling you guys last week, there is a huge wealth transfer going on right now with uh, with millennials. Um, it was like 70 trillion something dollars. So these baby boomers are retiring. A lot of them are retiring with money and that's from life insurance policies or investments or pensions that they've gotten from previous comp uh, companies that they work for, right? But on top of that, their advisors as well are retiring. So there's an open market. One sad thing is 
it's not enough uh, financial advisors and planners out there today. But the unfortunate part about that is it's over, I, I think I heard in the Atlanta area, it's like over a hundred and something thousand real estate agents, but it's not enough houses, right? Um, it's not enough houses to be sold. The, the reverse on the financial side is that there's people everywhere. The financial information, I think, is starting to become more readily available, but there's not enough advisors, right? So imagine if you're in that older age, it's important why you should have um, a plan in place because you know exactly how to spend it. You know exactly how to be smart about it all, right? Um, and the last behavioral barrier, obviously, is hyper loss aversion. For many years, behavioral finance has found that people feel about twice the pain from a financial loss as they feel pleased from a financial gain, right? So that's crazy to me. So people obviously hate to lose money, which is crazy because you look at Vegas and stuff like that. People go there all the time because it because of something about the addiction. Like people love to win, right? But it hurts people more, obviously, to lose, which to me, it makes like the most sense. But behavioral finance has found this, um, like I said, it'd be twice as pain. But re recent research has found this pain to gain ratio is magnified in retirement and losses can be five to 10 times as painful as gain. So as a result, people that retire are so afraid to lose money that they hold on to their savings as cash, which to me, that's another benefit of why ha while having passive income, because if you're having passive income and you can let it grow, then you, outside of this type of person, you can still spend your money know knowing that you have money coming in. So one of the best ways to overcome um, this during retirement is, you know, these behavioral barri barriers is to work with a qualified financial professional. Like I was saying with you guys is that no matter what stage you are in life, millennials, like we are, like I said, we are in that we are space to where we can be forgiven for not investing when we were younger. But if we don't do something now, it's going to really hurt us in the future. OK, so having a financial professional now is very important. Having a financial professional once you hit retirement is very important because, like I said, you need to be looking at your yearly, you know, your quarterly your monthly hey, uh, and, you know, even weekly, daily could be a bit extreme, you know, but maybe weekly, monthly uh, finances so that you can kind of tailor it to all the different life changes and the plans that you have for the future. So these are definitely some things to consider, okay? So you're likely to live longer than you think, plan for whatever you can and adjust as you must. So, you know, we don't know when it's our time to go. And to be honest, like, the way the news is going nowadays, man, like, I don't know about y'all, but that stuff messes me up. Like, like that nurse situation, you know, these school situations, like, it's it's scary, you know, um, it's, it's very scary. And the unfortunate part about living in a scary world is that there also are some beautiful aspects to it. But on top of that, we don't know when it's our time to go. So the best thing you can do is just live the best life possible. But make sure you be prepared at least financially so that it doesn't add that additional stress. If you plan, you can definitely avoid a lot of it. Okay, retirement readiness is less about what you've saved and more about how much income those savings must generate. So obviously you guys saw the examples earlier is that no matter the two people, you can look at somebody and constantly envy them, but you can be in a better financial situation than they are. And a lot of times you will be in a better financial situation if you put a plan together. Don't let behavioral barriers derail your retirement income strategy. Simple as that. Like you just saw the different behavioral bar uh, barriers is if you just plan smart, like main thing is if, if you don't fail to plan, then you, what is it? If you fail to plan, if you plan, you, we, oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. see, couldn't get it out of y'all. We do not plan to fail. Nobody wants to plan to fail, right? But we're planning to fail if we don't create a plan, right? So if you fail to plan, or if you plan, to, no, no one plans to fail, right? But we fail to plan. So we need to plan. Plan, plan, plan. Every If you see the job you're working, the business you're growing, wherever you're at in life, and what makes those organizations successful is because they have a very successful system. People that are successful in life, they have followed a very successful system. Investing monthly while following a financial plan 
puts you on track to having a very successful system that can get you closer to the goals and dream that you want versus not doing it at all. And then eventually it's going to hit you millennials. So remember, dog on technology, retirement is wonderful if you have two essentials, much to live on and much to live for, which is why some people, if they have kids, when they hit retirement, some goals are to travel a lot more, right? I think traveling is a great goal. I love to travel when I love to travel. I don't like to travel all the time, right? Some people, when it's their kids turn into adults, they want to be to spend more time with their grandkids. You know, like some people are as hobbies, like whatever, or some people speaking or changing the world, like whatever it is, make sure you have enough to live on and have a purpose to live for, okay? So with that being said, y'all, this is Coach Danny Renee. This is the Millennial Network Podcast. And remember, your network is your net worth. And I am out of here. Peace.